now what's your hierarchy of Boston sports? Basketball. Celtics. Football. Pats. Baseball. Sox. Hockey. Hockey. Uh, it descends into whiteness. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. Very much so. She's incredible stand-up comic, former writer on SNL, and like a super big time Boston sports fan. Comedian Sam J. I'm from a city where the white dudes either do meth or they work plumbing. You know what I mean? We both just did the roast, the yes. Tom Brady roast. It was wild. <laughs> it was wild. It was wild. The athletes, we were all fucking nervous. You know, you're in the forum. There's 15,000 people. It's a live show on Netflix. We don't do this shit. Yeah. You guys are used to this stuff. Girl, spiking that glass. And like, is there gonna be a law? I think there'll be a lawsuit. I think uh, someone. Dude, who are your top five roasters of the night? Yeah. Winner of tonight's contest will be remembered forever. We're gonna go over the 2007 Week 17 Patriots versus Giants game. This is when they went 16 and 0. This is when all the pressure was on the Patriots. At that time, there was nothing Tom Brady couldn't do. First of all, I don't think people get what it is to be a black Patriots fan. And I'm in Atlanta, of all places, where no one fucks with the Patriots. Go to this party. Everybody's a fucking Giants fan. I'm by myself. We win. I jump up, stand in front of the Giants screen, and I'm like, you, fuck you! I'm like screaming. Games with Names is a production of iHeartRadio. Welcome to Games with Names. I'm Julian Edelman, and they are Jack and Kyler, and we are on the search to find the greatest game of all time or the GOG, the greatest of all games. That's right, baby. On today's episode, we are talking week 17 of the 2007 season finale between the Patriots and the Giants. 16 and 0. 16 and 0. 16 and 0. A lot of records. With comedian... I can't talk right now. With comedian... It's all good. With comedian, comedian Sam J. She was incredible. Awesome. She's great. Awesome. So funny. Knows her stuff. Ball great buster. Great. <laughs> Definitely. Not, not afraid. No. To make What's you feel uncomfortable. <laughs> hey. Yes. She knows when she's with some white people, and she knows, hey, I'm going to say something, and let's see how they react. Yes. I claimed I up. loved it. <laughs> yeah, it was I don't know if Kyler did. I like Kyler it. Kyler turned red and shit. <laughs> you guys got to watch. You got to watch. It's crazy. <laughs> red. That's bullshit. She's incredible stand-up comic, former writer on SNL. We did the roast together, and like a super big-time Boston sports fan. It's, it was, it's cool to hear her perspective. Amen on being a Boston sports fan. We go into the Brady roast. Yep, a little bit of reaction to that. She had crazy stories of 28 to 3 game and the 18 and 1 giant loss. Yep. Game. Re repping New England down in Atlanta. Hey Amen. Behind enemy lines. Yep. And then we go down memory lane of the Patriots perfect -ish, <laughs> ish season. Season. And then we wrap it up by hitting the old hotline. We had some, we had some good, some crazy questions. You guys are bringing the heat. Yeah, that's the good stuff. Let's go. Let's, Let's go. go. Yeah. Oh, and before we get into it, how about that rescoring extravaganza, guys? It was pretty good. It was Back good. Track, it was great. Baby. The people loved it. We did were they? In, yeah. yeah. Is it, did they give us integrity comments? We got a, we got a lot. I think people. I are think pleased that's what we do. need. We need yeah. to back it, on track. Not perfect. If you think it's an integrity, you throw an integrity in the comments. Yep. It's integrity scores. Instead of W's in That's the chat. That's like a Matthew integrity. Slater score. Yes. Integrity's in the Integrity's chat. Integrity's in the chat. Yes. Integrity's in the chat. If it's dog shit and completely embellished. You just call it a jack score. Hey, hey now. Or we can go cubes. 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 <laughs> cubes. Let's go. Let's go. December 29th, 2007, MetLife Stadium, East Rutherford, New Jersey. An underdog from California and a freak from West Virginia are on the verge of NFL immortality. And oh yeah, a perfect regular season is on the line too. This, this is, is the, the foreshadow, foreshadow game. game. Welcome to Games with Names, Sam J. I'm so happy to be here. Are you? Yes. Are you, are you lying? No. Oh, she. I'm not Drew Blesso. She's she's, she's happy to be here. 
<laughs> so I had we had Drew on, and he goes, man, Sam J hated me. <laughs> I, I feel so bad because I ended up, like, really loving him. I love him. He's a sweetheart. He's so cool he to hang out with. Like, he came to the store. He yeah. drank with us. It was so fun. Yeah, he, he really, he's really got a good heart. Yeah, like, it was, like, I mean, genuinely good energy. It's tough to be in that situation. Absolutely. Now, let's let's get into why we're here. We're going to go over the 2007 Week 17 Patriots versus Giants game. This is when they went 16-0. and This is when all the pressure was on the Patriots to be the team that can they go undefeated. Why did you pick this game? Um, Because there was so much so much hope in the air, yeah. you know? There was so much hope in the air. As a, as a person from Boston, I just remember the energy around the team and, like, we're going to – and then – I also thought about the deflation of not winning the Super Bowl. Uh, the deflation. <laughs> <laughs> that was two years. That was three or four years later. Uh, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, but it was so much hope. It was so much hope. It yeah. Was, it was just a buzzing ass time. Now, I wasn't part of this team, but I remember watching this. And as a guy, I used to love Tom Brady because. Tom was always the underdog. It was always supposed to be Paint Manning's league. We were both from the Bay Area. He was never supposed to be the guy, so I always could relate to him. So I always was, like, rooting for the Patriots low-key mm -hmm. when they were in these runs. I was feeling anxiety yeah, every week because every team seemed to be playing them super hard. Is that how you guys felt that were fans, or you guys just said, ah, we're going to get this? Un, like, shakeable belief in Tom Brady at that time you, there was nothing Tom Brady couldn't do it was like we have Tom Brady we're gonna win everything yeah period. we have Tom Brady only a matter of time yeah well there's nothing to think about I mean because this, this point of his career he had three Super Bowl or three Super Bowls he had Giselle already yeah so he was on cloud he's nine a, he's the motherfucking man you almost said, <laughs> you almost said three supermodels super yeah. Yeah, yeah more than three <laughs> I went into joke mode because I had a joke that was designed over that. Yeah, he's the man at that time. And, like, we're, like, at that time, the city is, like, we're up. Buzzing. We're up. We're, we're, we're full of ego. We're, like, who can take us down? There's nothing. Man, we'll, we'll jump into it. Let's, let's start this off with we both just did the roast, the yes. Tom Brady roast. What did you think of it? It was wild. <laughs> it was wild. It was wild from the stage perspective. Like a lot was a lot was going on. Oh yeah, a lot of energy. I loved watching. For me, it was a lot of complete completing the story. Yeah, you know, like hearing Drew's perspective. You know what I mean? Him making fun of Tom. Like you used to come with that yellow truck. It's like, oh shit. Okay, so that was that relationship. And hearing Gronk, I loved Gronk's part of the roast and him just being like, yeah, you know, just yell at me. But what did I do? I count it. So it's like, oh, you guys had your own little tensions and like different stuff and hearing you guys kind of you know toss and throw to kind of that shit as a fan it was like kind of having an insider's like view into it yeah uh but then there was just like wild shit going on like Gronk spiking that glass and like is there gonna be a lot i think will there be a lawsuit i think I, someone dude that's what i said i was me and drew were sitting on the couch i was like that lady got hit and she's pretty pissed off oh she was like pissed and i was like oh this isn't good so then there was just like... No, someone got hit. Yeah. I heard yeah. that. Yeah. You could actually see someone be all, all pissed. By the way, Sam, yeah. this is Kyler and Jack. Sam, uh, thanks for being I here. I probably introduce them. Um, <laughs> it's all good. My bad. Yeah, so uh, it was a lot going on. It was, it was big. For me, I thought it was such a cool perspective to A, see professionals work in contrast to guys that at the athletes mm -hmm. were, we were all fucking nervous. You know, we were all terrified. You know, you're in the forum. There's 15,000 people. This is a live show on Netflix. We don't do this shit. Yeah. You guys are used to this stuff. And to see how you guys were able to... I was reading teleprompters. I was watching the teleprompter the whole time. I probably wasn't supposed to be doing that. But how, how you guys would see on the, the teleprompter what you were supposed to say. And sometimes you guys wouldn't even say anything that the teleprompter said. You would deliver it in a different way and bring things from that what you heard recently yeah. and then throw it in joke and go. Like, it was really impressive to, to watch you guys work. You landed all your planes. I was impressed by you. I was like, hey, he's like, he's landing these planes. Like, was, your timing was good. I was trying. You really got was the good. clutch gene. Clutch you, gene. No, no clutch gene. <laughs> <laughs> I hey, you I'm right glazing. Now. So I was, I, was a little, I, was, I was pretty nervous for this thing when they asked me to do it. You know what I mean? Just for what I just explained. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this isn't what we do. 
And then Jeff, he was really cool with me in, in like in a whole like mentor type role when we were doing our meetings and meeting with our joke makers and, you know, our team and their team. And, you know, Jeff invited me to go to the store. So mm -hmm. I went and did the store on Thursday, the Thursday before. Oh, yeah. I did like 10 minutes there just to test jokes. And like, that's where I got to like have that experience of what I said would get maybe a little like laugh, not laugh, but an introductory laugh or something. Mm -hmm. So you could time shit up. And I was more terrified when I went and did the store because it was so intimate. than when I went to do the show, like after that, I had the rep. Yeah. And then I went to the, into the show and I was like, oh, this way easier. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Not easier, but. The store, they're like this. Right there. You could feel it. <laughs> yeah, if they ain't feeling it, you no. feel it. And also, we had the people in front where I could, you could look at the people you knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had like some safety nets safety out there. Safety nets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. But I had a blast. No, it was the shit. Now, take us through your lead up of the roast. How they, who, who, when you got invited, uh, how did you prepare? How did you write your jokes? How'd you put together your fit? I was last. So I got, I got asked last. So I only had like, Five days mm -hmm. or oh something gosh. like that. Yeah. I only had like five days or something like that. Five or six days. It was like a week or a week and a half. Yeah. So. And um, so once we were, I was like, yeah, let's do it. I started just working on the jokes. And um, how do you man, work on the jokes? Well, I just started figuring out who I wanted to talk about. That was the first thing. So you look at lineup. Yeah. And then what you do, you research lineup or do you go off of like your own knowledge of lineup? My own knowledge. I'm just like, they were like, who? Once when I saw Drew was on it, I was like, for sure, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> Drew. I, I was like, for sure, She's Drew. Coming. <laughs> for sure, Drew. And then got to do Tom. And I knew the time. They were like, yo, it's live and it's a lot of people. So it's going to only be like four to six minutes. Like, mm -hmm. and six is like forcing it. So I was like, well, I'm not going to go comic to comic to comic, like old school roast style. Yeah. If I just don't have that much time, I'd rather just like focus it. So I was like, all right, Bert, Drew, once I locked that down, it was time to work on the jokes. My man Radio uh, helped me, like, you know, just shop ideas and, like, kind of, because I wanted mine to kind of feel, like, more thematic than just, like, one-liners. So yeah. we were just trying to find those, like, through lines that could kind of bridge everything. Um, so it was me, uh, Radio, my Wait, girl did Megan you, Daly. you say thematic? Yeah. Like, it's, that goes by theme? Yeah. I'm not a word guy. <laughs> <laughs> I like that yeah. word, though. I'm going to start using that. Yeah, I wanted to have a little... So it was me, Radio, and my homegirl, Megan Gelly. You know, I kind of told them the different directions I wanted to go in and, like, how I wanted to do, like, the mediocre uh, white man with Bird, and I wanted to go this way with Drew. And then, you know, we just started trying to get those jokes to hit hard and, and land all those planes. And I was just running it at the Comedy Cellar, like, every day up until I left. Cellar. Yeah. Love the cellar. Mm -hmm. Good vibes at the cellar. It's, it is good vibes. You know Sam Morell? Yes. You know, me and Sammy start. We he was on this podcast with us for, a, for our first season. Oh, really? I love yeah. Sam. I love Sam. Shout out, Sam. We love him. Yeah, yeah he's a big sports guy. Yeah. Yeah. Sam was in our writing process, and oh yeah, yeah, yeah we had to tap in the shit by Sam. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Now, Sam, we go. We, sometimes we go to watch basketball together. And yeah, shit. yeah. He was calling Bronson being Bronson three years ago. Brunson. Uh, Brunson. Yeah, Brunson is the man right now. He's. I think he deserves MVP. He's electric. He should get MVP. Is he MVP? I didn't know. I didn't watch the whole regular season. He got he's, MVP he's, numbers. He's got MVP numbers. He's got Absolutely. forty the last three. Yes, insane. playing like Jordan. Yo, it's insane for it's his size. Nuts. It's not. I know for his size. And also, I just feel like he's having the most impact on a team in the league right now. It's like you could say joking, but he's not changing. The, the team's the team. Oh yeah. Like Brunson is is changing the team and playing playing forty eight minutes a night. Tim's yes. got him. Is he gonna run out? Forty eight minutes. A night. I was gonna say. I, is he I, gonna run out of gas? Uh, I hope as a Celtics fan. I, I hope, hope not. So. I hope not for his sake, as a Celtics fan. Right. Yes. <laughs> but for his sake, I actually just don't even want to see the. I, I don't either. I don't want Thank it. You. That'll be scary. I don't even want to see the Knicks. And I, I live in New York. If we lose to the Knicks, I got to move. You know what I mean? I can't, so it's, I can't, I can't be in New York in that energy. How is it being a Boston fan in New York? Uh, Tough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> tough. Because they love to see us lose. You Always. know what I mean? Like The way they celebrate when we don't win is like, it's annoying, you yeah, know what I mean? And 100%. like Michael Che is one of my closest friends. And like every time we've gone to a Knicks game together, I think the Celtics have lost and he's put me through absolute <laughs> hell. Sam, do you wear, do you rep the Celtics and Red Sox and Pats on the street? You yes. wear the gear? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm too scared. Whenever I go to New York, I leave it at home. Nah, I'm, you a, got, I'm a big You know puss. what is crazy? We're worse than them. 
You know what I mean? Like we, like they don't care. Cause New York's like a That's big true. city. That's true. And like, you know what I mean? They yeah. really don't. We're like, you come to Boston and we go fucking crazy. <laughs> like we are worse than they are. They're they're pretty chill about it. That's because it. they've been irre irrelevant for about a decade in all Ooh, of the sports. Ooh, they have. They, they haven't have. made. They haven't won a championship in the first time in like a ten year period. But they don't. It's something so weird about New York. Like, even right now with the Knicks, I'm like, if the Knicks stopped right here, the city of New York would be electric. It it already is. Yeah, like they'd be like, that's great. Like yeah. they don't even need the thing. You know what I mean? Like you know, how Bostonians like we need the thing. The parade. We need the. And if you don't give us that, it's like fuck you. We hate you. You stink. We don't care how well you do. Bring bring home the shit. It's colder up north. Yeah, and we don't give a fuck. But New York, they're like, it was a good run. Yeah, but they're gonna start. It, th this is a team that will develop them into having more higher expectations. And yeah, then they'll, they'll become cold. Yeah, I I mean I think it, it, if they win this year, they're they're gonna go. If they make it past Boston and they go, they're gonna go crazy. Yeah. And they're gonna be turned. And then I think they will be more like about their shit. They better. But I don't think they'll ever be like Boston. No. That shit's just like in the DNA of the city. Yeah, and and it's a it's a different city. There's more competition than just sport in New York. Mm -hmm. You're in the Mecca. Mm -hmm. You got the whole fashion. They have everything going everything. on. Yeah, that all we have is sports. Sports and schools. Yeah, and alcohol. Lots yeah. of that. <laughs> <laughs> Who are your top five roasters? Of the night? Yeah. Nikki. Tony. I enjoy Gronk. You. Yeah. Who in there? Drew. Drew. Hey, I like that. Drew had a good opening. Yeah. It was Drew. good. It was good to open with him. Yeah. No, yeah. Andrew. Schultz. Schultz. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Drew. I was trying to get you. <laughs> we'll Still give Bledsoe honorable mention, though, because he had mention. a really good say. He yeah. did. He did. Honorable mention, <laughs> Drew Bledsoe. It's kind of. I don't hate you. I saw an interview where he, he said I was really mean and I hurt his feelings. I felt really bad. I mean, that's a roast. He's a nice guy. He signed up. We all signed up for it. I mean, I'm, I pretty much sucked Tom's dick after the roast, <laughs> according to the jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and every day before. And every day before. I mean, that's why I live in this house. <laughs> Are there any jokes that you had to cut? No, I cut stuff like for time. Yeah. I was gonna I was gonna do a joke to Kim Kardashian. Like I was gonna, you know, do an audible, but I changed my mind, which I'm kinda glad I'm I did. I feel bad. Because I her. felt I after, feel bad. Yeah, after all that other shit, I was like, oh, that would have just been kind of like beating up on her, you know? So I kind of was glad that I didn't do it. But they didn't like tell me, oh, you can't use this or you can't use that or anything like that. No. When did you find out that Kim was going to be there? Because it was kind of a surprise to the audience when they listed her in the credits. I don't know. I, uh, when I, I, I when I walked into rehearsal and saw her. Yeah, that's that's when I saw that on Saturday. That's when I found out. Yeah. When I walked in the rehearsal. I looked I like, around. I was like, oh, he's going to be here. He's going to be here. No. Did you cut any jokes? I cut, I cut a. I could have uh, let's go one. So oh yeah, we cut. Uh, it was it was something like you know we all know what Tom's favorite term is. Let's go, let's <laughs> go. I mean, he got it patented. He had a podcast named after it. It's also what his wife said when she left with the kids. Oh, see, you're go. good. Look at you know how to <laughs> do this, man. Go, damn, you get in the fucking car right now. <laughs> <laughs> you delivered the fuck out of that shit. No, nah, we, we practiced. We had, we had and then I wanted to incorporate Gronk in a joke. Uh, it, was a, it was a Gronk joke along paired with a, a Belichick joke. It was like, uh, you know, everyone gives Gronk a, a rap for being a dummy, a dum dum. But he's actually a savant with numbers. Watch. Gronk, what's 69 minus 37? 32. 32. That's right, Gronk. The same number of teams that rather lose and have a conversation with Coach Belichick. <laughs> That's a combo. Combo. Come on, dog. Two-piece combo. Come on, dog. <laughs> the, also, the do you remember the plastic, the other plastic surgeon joke? The football players take hits to the head. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Football players usually take hits. To, or it's, it's a brutal game. Football players take you know, a lot of shots to the head. Tom takes shots to the forehead, the crow's feet, the lips. <laughs> that's, that's good. You know, he... <laughs> you didn't set the record in college, but you did set the record in college in. Who's laughing now, Tom? Not you because your face don't move and you 
That's you know good. Saying? So I stole the back part of that joke and put it on a different one. That's good. Y'all had some heat. <laughs> These guys, some, they were, we were working our, our, our nuts off. Y'all had some heat in the seat. That's what's up. I love just two stand-ups here kicking it and talking. No. Yeah, yeah, don't yeah, put yeah. me in that category. <laughs> don't put me in that category. <laughs> she writes jokes. the jokes. I, I, I'm in on the right of the joke. What was your favorite nightclub in Boston? <laughs> <laughs> This is going to turn into an interview of you. What's up? Um, now, what, what, what era are we talking here? Oh, okay. Like the 10s? We used to go to this place. You remember Splash back in the day? Splash. What it was, was over it? at South Street Station. It had like yes. the pool on the deck. Yes, yes, yes. We used to go there. Uh, I mean, we all went to what? Cure or something? Cure. Cure. Yes. But then later, they started developing Seaport. Yeah. You know, and, and so they had the Grand, which was like... A Vegas style mm -hmm. club. What was that? Under or something? To be a white white man in Boston who played you a superstar. Drowning in vagina, dude. Drowning in pussy. You had to be. It's yeah. already like Boston's already white Atlanta. And, and yeah. then <laughs> you play football oh there. God. Yeah, I mean you're going crazy. We had a lot of fun. I'm happy for you. <laughs> that sounds fucking amazing. What were your did you did you did you learn black Boston at all? A little bit. Well, like, all right, so what, what were you doing on that side? That, actually, I, it wasn't, I wouldn't hang out in black Boston. If I was hanging out with, like, my blacker friends, we would go to Providence. Whoa. I'm just telling Fucking you. Providence. Providence. <laughs> Why? That's just where we all went. So you Took didn't have those. no, like, food spots in from the black part of the city? No, no, none of that? There was a breakfast cafe in Jamaica Plain. But I don't think it was black. It was more hipstered. Yeah, that's JP. Like, yeah. I mean, the dots changed too. Dot, Dorchester's has changed. Yes. A lot. Yeah, but they're still. I I I didn't really know where to go because oh, none of the black guys that were on the team were from Boston, so they yeah, didn't know black Boston. That's disappointing. I'm gonna have to take you to black Boston. You got to. Yeah, I gotta take you around. What, what's the place you gotta bring me to? This all okay. We gotta go to Simcoe's. Simcoe's. What are they? What's what's Simcoe's? Hot known dogs. For? Hot dogs. It's like a hot dog stand. So like hot dogs, like fried clams, like fried scallops, fried shrimp. That shit. You gotta go to Silver Slipper for the breakfast. Get you a beef sausage sandwich with the egg and the cheese. Bang bang. You got to go to good Chinese is only in the, in the hood. You Where? know what I'm saying? Anywhere, really. You could go to any bulletproof in the hood, get you some good Chinese It's hard food. to find good Chinese in Boston. Shut the fuck up. Then you were I'm a Bay Area kid, Shut Kay. the fuck up. We, 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 we have the best Chinese food. No. We have not the, even close. Where were you eating Chinese food at? I don't even know. Fuck out of here. We went to a couple places in, what is that one place in, in Chinatown? Taiwan Cafe. No. There was that little place right by the comment. Uh, P.F. Chang's, was it? Oh, shut the fuck up. Wait, are you from, are you from Boston? Uh, no, yeah, we I all lived in Boston. Yeah. We have great Chinese food. Man. All right, man. It when, ain't even New York Chinese. It's, like it's Chinese. way better than New York. New York's got some good Chinese. You're fucking insane. I, I don't know. Maybe we just have different taste buds. We got to... I got to bring you to... You... One day we'll do this. We're going to do this. Well, I'll show you Boston. We will do a... What is it? A black culture food yes, tour? Yes, yes, yeah. Is it, yeah. Uh, let's do it with, with a Chinese food sprinkled in. Well, I got to. Yeah, we gotta. I gotta show you Boston. Show me Boston. Yeah, you haven't been to the Caribbean festival. You know we have a little, like Caribbean. Where festival. is that at? It happens on Blue Hill Lab. You gotta go to the hood. I got to. Yeah, you missed out. I did. So you didn't fuck no black girls in the city. A lot of Cape Verdeans. There's a lot of Cape Verdeans. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all uh, right, on dogs, I got to give you that. Hey. All right, all right, all right. Hey. <laughs> Come on now. Everybody comes to the city and discovers Cape Verdean women. They're like, what is that? And Never like, heard of it. They're like, Cape Verdeans. Like, what is that? Like, Never yeah. heard of it. That's legit. Let's go back to around December 29th, 2007. This is a segment where we talk about what was going on around pop culture. The number one movie was National Tre Treasure, Book of Secrets. Did you see that? Yes, I like National Treasure. I like, I like them too. I always like the Treasure Hunt movie. They're good. It's a good. It's fun. It's light. It's youthful, but you still get to be grown. Yeah, and you know it's kind of Nick Cage when he was still in Victory Lane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was still the guy. Now he does all these. Crazy What's your favorite Nicolas Cage movie? The Rock. The Rock is the shit, bro. Bay Area, San Fran. The I Rock is it. the shit. The Rock. Then they had the little green ball shit. They had to like. Yeah, yeah. it was. They were like. Uh, I'm a face off person. Myself. Face off. Yeah. Was, yeah. Loved face off. face off. 
Face off. Face what else off was, was my Nick shit. Nick Cage. And it was that weird jail. We, in The Rock, they had those boots, Yes, right? yeah. because it was futuristic or he yeah. was real, like, super max. Yeah. Con Air. Con Air. Con Air. We <laughs> love Con Air. <laughs> Con Air was very good. <laughs> Con Air is the shit. And Gone in 60 Seconds. Fuck that. I have Eleanor. You do? Yeah, I'll show you later. Oh, shit. I got That's Eleanor. exciting. I, had, I got Eleanor because you of buy, that movie. You're like, you like a lot of, like, memorabilia and shit. Vintage shit. Yeah, I like a lot of old toys and yeah, like shit like I mean, that, too. If you get new stuff, there's a new one next month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you get you, something from back in the day. You also, when shit. you have an old car and you drive, like, manual, you just feel the car. I have, yeah. You know, I got the Tesla, and you do that. But you just don't feel... You have to pay attention in an old car. What's your favorite car that you have? Probably my 68 yeah. Mustang. That's what's up. I like old cars. Yeah. I want a, I want a Nissan NSX, like the old one. where the NSX. Like a 92? Yeah, with the NSX and the brake light. Oh, and yeah. then like the little... I literally, this is a simulation. I saw it today on an Instagram feed of something. It was badass. It was a 92. Yeah. That's why I brought the number. Yeah, I want, I want one of those. What? And I want a DeLorean. Uh, Yo. Doc? I want a DeLorean for Squirrel sure. discovered You know, you travel? can buy, at least when I looked it up, maybe four years ago, there's a guy like somewhere in Florida... Who bought all the old parts? Like when they're the not expensive. Closed. They're not expensive. Yeah. Like, not expensive. He bought all the parts when the factory closed, and he'll build. He can build you a new. One. I've seen that. Yeah, I've seen that on yeah. the internet. I had a friend who had one. And they lived in a farm. It was just like in the shed. Like, yeah, you want to have twelve thousand no. dollars? Yeah, yeah, right. That's the literally the the the, the no, plot of the movie. God. Number <laughs> two. It Justin was in the farm. Wordis. Justin Wordis. <laughs> Hell yeah! And Fucking I want a liar. car. I want to check out a car like Transformer style. So this is my idea, right? I want to get like a like a. Like a badass, like like Charger or a Hellcat, right? Paint it like a Decepticon one. Like I want a Decepticon joint. Got the Decepticon emblem in the joint yeah. in the middle. Bow. Decepticon shit on the seat. Wow. I don't know what color. Maybe red and black, right? But I want the two front doors to like suicide. I want the back doors to Lambo. And when you hit it, it goes like doo -doo 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 -doo. it makes the noise and all the doors open. That's gonna be so expensive. <laughs> Just because you, it it won't be expensive for the car, but putting in all that electronic. Yeah, but that'd be fire. It would be hella fire. You're right, and then make the noise, and then they, the doors all do it together. And then I get in, I just hit a button, and it goes. That's what like Teslas do now. It's fire. Teslas are my daughter loves a Tesla because it does the dance thing and it fucking beeps and shit. You can make <laughs> yeah. doors open. That's cool. But what was life like for you back in 2007, 2008? This was pre, This were you still in the music industry being? 2007. In the office job? I am, I'm in Atlanta. I'm in Atlanta. I'm, I I went to go to school, but I'm not going to school. I'm just like drinking and hanging out. Wait, so so Atlanta's black Boston? Yeah. Because you said Boston. <laughs> yeah. <Why? laughs> so Atlanta, I'm partying, you know what I mean? So many parties. Uh. I'm teetering the line. I'm, I think I'm I'm putting Dick down, but I'm not done with Dick. But yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I don't think this is my game. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think uh, I need to go into something else. So I'm, I'm kind of over there. Like Now, is it because you're not attracted to the D? Or is it because the what the D brings? Because you know, guys are idiots. You know, I wasn't... I just really wasn't into it. Yeah. Like, I had a boyfriend for a long time. Yeah. And we, we met young, you know? So... Mm -hmm. I thought that I liked Peters. And then we got trauma bonded. Like my mom died and he was my best friend and my boyfriend. So there was a trauma bond there. So I did love him. You know what I mean? Yeah. But once we broke up and I just got in the world and I was trying other D's, I was like, I don't like this. And then I thought, oh, maybe I'm like one of those girls who has to like be in love and that's the only way I like it. But it was just that I just didn't like it. Yeah. Because I can fuck a stranger when it's a woman it doesn't really matter because i'm actually attracted to women in that way yeah. i'm just not into dudes that way like i see it physically i get it like dick doesn't scare me but it just never did the thing and i think as a i know like there's some gold star lesbians who like never been with a dude and i kind of look down on them a little bit because i'm like bitch you don't even you don't really like i know for sure you not sure you might get tapped and be like i'm totally into this I did it. I did it for real. And it's just not my bag. Note to self. Mm -hmm. Note to self. Mm -hmm. In the sports world, <laughs> in 2007, college football national champs, LSU. This is when LSU, was this, uh, who was the head coach? Was this, this Steven was, Ridley? I think this was um, 
What's his name? Les Miles. Les Miles, yeah, Les yeah, yeah. Miles. This was, yeah, because Saban was before this. Heisman Trophy winner, Tim Tebow. We, we make he a lot of Tim Tebow for, jokes on this, in this yeah. pod. Tebow. Super Bowl champions were the New York Giants. That was the oh. first one, right? No, this this is yeah. the first one. No, that's, that's the first time yes. when they beat us. Right? Yeah, yes. and then the other one was 11. I was there. Still too soon. Ugh. I was that there. That shit was, oh my God. We actually did that game with. I was in Atlanta. I go, I go to this party. First of all, I don't think people get what it is to be a black Patriots fan. Which <laughs> Once you are outside of Boston. Break that down for like. Um, Everybody looks at you like a coon. They're literally like. What what are you Traitor? some type of Uncle Tom? How could you love this like white ass team that represents everything like white and oppressive that is America? They're fucking even called the fucking Patriots. They're from white ass Boston. Like what is wrong with you? Like the whole like black people. This is not this is not the team for you. Literally think you should pick another team. But so I'm you like, got to be tough to be a black Patriots to be fan. Very tough. Very and tough. resilient because no one wants you to be great. Yeah. And I'm in Atlanta, of all places, where no one fucks with the Patriots. You know Black what I mean? Black Boston's. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Boom. Go to this party. Everybody's a fucking Giants fan. I'm by myself. There's no Patriots fans at this party. Everyone's a Giants fan. Everyone wants a Giants fan. Even if they're not a Giants fan, they're from Atlanta. The Falcons suck. So they're like, <laughs> you know what I mean? We're jumping on this train. That's the train everybody's riding. I'm alone and just getting be rated like truly almost gonna cry um, yeah. like because i'm like how is this happening also i think you attach a lot of your own identity to your teams oh, so when you're sure. when your teams are losing you're like my life's gonna be over i'm not gonna have anything good yeah. <laughs> like i'm cursed with the team this is all just spiraling out of control and the the celebration that was going on around me oh my god it was a bad day that was a bad day yeah, that was terrible. I called one of my good friends that was home, and I was like, what the fuck? Like, I'm talking to him, like, and I'm in this house with giant fans, and she said, like, why would you even go in there? She said, why did you go in there? I was like, I had nowhere else to go. <laughs> there, was, there was nowhere to go that was Patriot friendly, you know what I mean? Yeah. The uh, amount of, like, chirp texts from non-Giants fans I remember getting out of for that, like, Dude, oh, still so traumatic. happy when we yes. lose. People are like so. It's like, bro, you're not even happy. a Giants fan. You're just chirping me to chirp me. Come on now. So happy. I hate those kind of fans. This same year, the Celtics won their 17th championship. That summer in 08. They won. They won over the Lakers. Yes, I remember that too. I was at ESPN Zone in Atlanta. Oh, we dude. were. We were watching on the big screen. Remember, they used to have that really giant screen. ESPN Zones were the best back they then. They were the shit. I'm so mad they're not around anymore. I know. At the giant screen, all Lakers fans, of course. Yeah, Again, of course. no one likes anything Boston. No one. <laughs> no one likes anything Boston. And but you usually can find a transplant in a certain area. Yeah, but not black people because they really associate everything Boston with white whiteness. I, yeah, I get it. You know what I mean? I do get it. Celtics, Larry Bird. So no one, everyone is totally Lakers, right? We're in Atlanta. We win. I jump up. Yes. Stand in front of the giant screen. Yes. And I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. Oh, I'm like screaming. Let them know. Screaming. Screaming. And I needed that. I needed that. that year. Anything that was, is possible. <laughs> KG, baby. I needed that. That was a big, that was a big year. Sox win the World Series. Yeah. But you guys are you guys are pretty much in the sink of winning with the Sox. Yeah. How, now what's your hierarchy of Boston sports? Basketball. Celtics. Football, Pats, baseball, Sox, hockey, hockey. I I I I ascend. Uh, it descends into whiteness. It's like <laughs> <laughs> very much so, very much so. So where do the the revolution stand? <laughs> <laughs> Honorable mention, like Drew. <laughs> Were you in Atlanta for the twenty to three Super Bowl? I, I I was, and I have a story for that. Yes. Okay. I was no, I wasn't in Atlanta. I was in LA. You were in LA. Okay. I was in LA, and I have a, a wild story. That was a wild. That was because that was also so. At this time, I'm like really in comedy. You know, I've moved to LA to do comedy, and um, I'm feeling good. You yeah. know, shit is kind of moving. I'm feeling good, and I used I would do these Super Bowl parties. Like, I mean, um, football every Sunday was at my house. All little homies we do comedy together. They would all come over. My girl would make wings. We'd watch football. So Super what Bowl. What kind of wings though? Lemon pepper, we would do lemon pepper hot. And then she would do something off brand and tell like garlic parmesan or jerk. There would always be like a little 
flavor, right? What about like sauce? We got dip sauce. We got some ranch. Ranch. We got some ranch. blue cheese. Like, are you, know you blue cheese or ranch? I. It depends on what I'm on that day. I'm the same. Buffalo. I like blue cheese. I'm traditional, but sometimes I'll do ranch. But lemon pepper, I usually go ranch. Yeah. Okay. My bad. So no, no. Nah, nah, these are important <laughs> questions. Yeah. Um. I love chicken wings. <laughs> so the Super Bowl is about to happen. Mommy's like, "Yo, are you doing a party?" I had that experience with the. So you're traumatized. Oh, a little trauma. God. I'm traumatized. So I go, no. I don't want to watch the game with people who aren't Patriots fans. I know you guys aren't Patriots fans. I'm not having a fucking party. I'm going to just watch the game in my house. Me and my lady, because she was also from um, Massachusetts, my ex-wife. I'm going to watch this shit at my house. That's it. I'm not, we're not doing that. And he's like, you're being a fucking sucker. You know we come every week. Now you're not going to have any way. Where, where are we supposed to watch the game, bro? And like, I'm the only one who's like settled with my, in my first two. Like, I have a girl at the time. I have like a home where there's gonna be food cookies. Like, you know, we're all living like fucking savages. Like your house is the house. And I'm like, I'm not doing it. He breaks me, I do it. So now everybody's in my house and we are getting beat. Bad. 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 And it's like for a Bostonian, you feel like the curse is coming back. Literally, I'm like, oh shit, the curse is coming back. Cause this is unraveling in a way that is fucking insane. Like. We're playing in a way that doesn't make sense to me. Like, plays are happening, and it's fucking Atlanta. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening? So now I'm equating this to my career, right? I'm like, oh, everything's about to crumble <laughs> around me. Like, like a true Boston fan. Oh, oh my God. True like, Boston I'm, fan. Yeah, I'm a cursed Bostonian once again. Nothing good's going to happen to me this year. Everything I wanted this year is fucking down the toilet. This is fucking crazy. And these motherfuckers are cello. Great. Like they're having the time of their life. They're passing around memes. They're fucking laughing. And they're all in my house eating my food. Oh. And I'm just like, I want to fucking, I'm quiet. They're like standing in my face. Ah! And I'm just eating this shit, right? Did you give up on us? My friend, I gave up. I'm not going to lie. I gave up. My friend Jack, uh, God rest his soul, he comes in a Randy Moss jersey. Every time Atlanta scores, he is taking this jersey off, throwing it on the floor and stepping on it. <laughs> Because we're comics, too. So people are being fucking ridiculous, right? I am seething. I want to fucking cry. I'm losing hope. I'm like, it can't happen. My ex-wife goes, we have Tom. She's like, just believe. And I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm literally, like, watching in the comeback starting. And now I'm like, I'm just quiet. I'm not saying anything. I'm just like, hands in prayer. Mm -hmm. Don't want to jinx it. Don't want to jinx it, but I'm like, okay. <laughs> Complete a pass. <laughs> I'm like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. They're getting quieter. The house is getting quieter. I don't, I'm just like, yo, yo. I never erupt. We win. But did you give body movement? Were you yeah, getting the body I'm, movement? I'm like, so mm, you, they knew you were mm, about, you were tea kettling. Mm, mm, mm. And, now, and now I'm watching Tom. Tom. So, you know, you know when you see Brady go Brady. I'm like, my nigga's in it. Let's fucking go. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's about to do these niggas. So I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We win. I jump up. I scream. I'm going to get everything I fucking want this year. <laughs> it's my year. This is my fucking year. And then I looked at my friend Jack. I said, now, put on your fucking jersey and get the fuck out of my house, bitch. <laughs> I threw him out of my fucking house. <laughs> and it was the best day of my fucking life. And that year... I got JFL. I got, I, that was my motherfucking year. So you got everything. I got everything I wanted. It was because of Tom Brady. It was because of Tom. Gotta believe. Yeah. You gotta believe. Because of Tom Brady. When did you know that we had it? That first touchdown in the third. James White, I believe, or was it Danny? I was like, we're good. Yeah. We're good. We're about to snatch the heart out of these boys. For me, I was still doing math. Yeah. I was like, all right, that's cute. Yeah. We're still down 21 points. Yeah. Or 18 or whatever. I can't do math. I was like, Tommy going to lose. Nah, I just, it wasn't until the defense. I saw that when they started pissing down their leg. Yeah. The offense, Atlanta's offense, and then Trey Flowers had a big sack. They had a holding, and Dante mm -hmm. fucking had the strip sack. Then I'm, I'm sitting there like, oh, this shit's about to happen. Yeah, that was James White in the third. Yeah. James White. When, we, when, we, when we got that... I was like, now it's just pick apart time. Because I'm like, okay, he's figured it out. Yeah. He's figured it out. And now he's just going to methodically 
pick them apart. And you, Tom can do that shit so fast. Once he can move the ball, once he figures out how to move it, nigga, we eating you up. He's disciplined. Yeah, just takes what they give him. We're gonna eat you up. Dink and dunk, death by a thousand cuts. Bro, that's what I mean. We're gonna eat you up. So I, how did that catch you had though? Crazy. Yeah, it's bad route. <laughs> It was. Crazy. Jackie, break it down for the New York Let's Jets run through these. or Giants. You missed the Vinatieri years, though. Yeah, but I heard a lot about Vinatieri because the first time I met Matt Castle, we'll keep this quick, uh, he did a drawing. You remember Vinny Testaverde? It's like, yeah, why? Matt Castle, we're throwing at a Manhattan Beach fucking field, and he gets a piece of paper. He takes it from one of the coaches we're working with, and he d has two, two, three drawings of three guys, and you have... One guy at the baby dick, that's Castle. Then he had a regular size dick, was Tom. And then he drew a dick off the fucking page for Vinny. He goes, he had the biggest dick. <laughs> like, you could have just told me that. You didn't have to draw a picture. <laughs> like a fucking kid. First time I ever met Castle. Like, he starts talking about he being actually, tested he his actually, dick. I feel like he did it because he was like, I don't know how to say this and not feel gay. But then he did the gayer thing because he drew. That means he's thinking about it. <laughs> Gotta show it. Show it on tell. <laughs> I missed Vinny. Oh my God. Let's run through these Giants real quick to set the stage. <laughs> this castle. is a 10 and 6 Giants year coming off a classic, one of those 8 and 8 Giant seasons before this. Fourth year of the Tom Coughlin era. He was on the hot seat this year, kind of like he was every year, it seemed like. Every year. Every year. They still go in the playoffs and do Giants in the playoffs thing. This was the first year of the post Tiki era. Tiki, uh, Tiki went on to NBC and he caught a little flack for throwing some shade at. Uh, Coughlin and Eli after he joined the media. Um, they were, this was Spags as a new DC. We know what Spags is doing with Kansas City now. Fucking Spagnola. He's Mr. Defensive Coordinator Extraordinaire now. Stray. Stray hand held out all training camp, but came back and played. Uh, we all know he's Mr. TV now too. And then in week eight, they played at Wembley uh, over in London. This was the first year of the, the European England we series. We played at London one year. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Just because we're such a domestic sport. You know, you Do always, they really enjoy it? They like it? Like they go crazy? It's pretty big. Yeah. I mean, the shit sold out. It's the crazy thing is they like the biggest cheers you'll get is during like a field goal or <laughs> a kickoff. <laughs> like anytime the ball's being they kicked. Kick it. Like, all right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's catching waves. That's funny. And then we got we got to give a little love to some of these Giants dudes. This was it's Eli sense. Plaxico, Amani Toomer. Plaxico. Plaxico. We all remember Plax. Uh, David Tyree. Ugh. Antonio Pierce, now the coach of the Raiders. Uh, OCU Manure was the lone pro bowler this year. Monty Toomer. Monty Toomer. I just like money. The damn Mannings. The damn Mannings. And then the record-breaking New England Patriots. They were coming off a 12-4 and four year. That was the year that we blew that big lead to the Colts in the AFC Championship mm -hmm. game. Uh, Jesus. Uh, win the AFC East for the sixth time in seven years. This was the glory years. We're rolling. Brought in Welker, Moss, and Dante Stallworth in the offseason to really yes. bolster that wide receiver room. Uh, this was also the Spygate season, unfortunately. Yes. Uh, so Tom's playing angry. But they always rolling. hating on us because they always hating on us, bro. Hating that shit. Really looking is. for something. Always, always looking for something. Like, come on, bro. They hate us because they ain't us. I know everybody up there looking. <laughs> Everyone. You know everybody's up there looking. Whistle oh, yeah. Blowers, 100%. Bill's little do boy. Eric Mann Don't make this a whole. <laughs> Keep it G, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but what is Mangini thinking? I know. That, yeah. Like, that was... Mangini was like, Bill was his daddy. Hot blocking. Literally. You, <laughs> literally. So, that's some mob shit. Hey, that's why he, he hasn't been a coach since, really. Hot blocking, he, bro. Blackballing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Billy O was brought onto the staff as an offensive assistant. Fucking Billy O. We love Billy O over here, baby. Uh, most points in a season by an offense, 589 points. And the defense was a top 10 defense, too. Uh, give some love to these guys. I mean, these are... These are pillars of the Patriots foundation here. R.I.P. Junior. R.I.P. Junior. That's my guy. Kevin Falk, Lawrence Maroney, Randy. Seymour, Hall of Famer. Troy. Yeah. Will Fork. Oh. Big Ben Watson. Yo. Big Ty Vince. Warren. Yo. Man. Right when I was, when I was a rookie, Will Fork. Dante he, Samuel. Will Fork had like, I roll up to the, the player's lot. I'm in like Lincoln. I was I'm seven round draft pick. So you, that was like a highlight of your day when you're a young player mm -hmm. that's barely going to make the team. You just get to see all the cool guy cars. Yeah. You see, you know, the Mercedes. And at that time, the, L the LS460, Alexis was like hot. Everyone mm -hmm. had the Lexus. Randy had one. Tom had one. Mr. Kraft had one. Will Fork rolls up. 
in a goddamn pick, like a semi truck. He had a semi truck <laughs> with no no trailer. <laughs> That's what he used to drive. Half of Optimus Prime. Fool. <laughs> it was like the most shooting fucking car for him. He'd get out. He'd be in overalls with no shirt. He'd be thirty degrees. He was so cool. You know, he's nice on the smoker too. Oh, he's mm. he can we, cook his balls off. Hit you with a good brisket. So I've he, heard. Ribs. He makes Damn. unbelievable ribs. Damn. We got to go down and visit him in Texas. I assume he's Texas, right? I think. I don't know where he lives. I don't right know. Now. Either way, we got to get Big Vince on here. We got to. That'd be so sick. Who's your Patriots uh, Mount Rushmore? Harrison. Nice. Rodney. Yeah, I like him. He's mean. Rodney was on I like that too. he was mean. That's why I like Rodney because he. I, I remember when he was like, I'll take the fine. Did you talk to him at the roast? Yeah. I remember he's like, I'll take the fine. I'm out there headhunting motherfuckers. Need that kind of guy. He said he put money aside every year for the fine. <laughs> So badass. <laughs> so badass. He was legendary. I like him. He was legendary like in practice. Him. Yeah. Huh? Okay. Uh, Tom, of course. Two and a Terry, man. Clutch. And a Terry. And a Terry. Because there's nothing. Like, at that, the Vinatieri era, there was something about knowing that if we got to 50. Like, that's how we used to play the fuck out of motherfuckers. Like, we don't even need We'll get to the 50 and kick it on your bitch ass. We good. We good. Any do condition. Any condition. Any condition. He could do it. Any condition. Full rain, sleet, snow. And my man's getting it done. Mm. Getting it. You, you're getting beat by a kicker, <laughs> which is disrespectful. He's going to be and a whole kicker. We're going to disrespect you like that. Amen. So I got to put Vinatieri on there. Um, McGinnis? Willie. Willie Mack. Willie Mack. He was there the other night too, right? Yeah. Willie Mack. That's Willie for sure. Good to see Willie. Hey, yeah. Was it cool to see all those guys in one room and dap them up oh as a fan? Oh, my God. I can't even imagine. Every, like, every pick, I was sending it immediately to my brother. Like, <laughs> That's so yeah. sick. Yeah. Um, Willie Mack was a man. Willie, ha There's a locker in the locker room that's known as Willie's Locker still to this day. That's so sick. That's where they put always the buck of the, like, if you're the big, like, the top buck of the defense guy that is the leader, they sit in Willie's Locker. And I would say Welka because he was the first – White There's boy. only four on the Mount Rushmore, so that's a it's an honorable mention. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. <laughs> Julian, I'm like, fuck that. <laughs> 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 I'm saying that he was the you before you. He was the first white boy I fell in love with like that. But Troy Brown was him before him. I like Troy Brown too. We love Troy. It's hard to pick, dude. Let's just, I, I can't you pick. You already got four. We're good. All right. all right. It's a good problem to have, but that means we got a lot of great guys. Yeah. Should we uh, run through this lead up and hit the game real hit quick? The game. The lead up, the biggest story, of course, was going sixteen and zero. We enter fifteen and zero. They enter ten and five. Both teams had made the playoffs. So the other big story was: is there even any point playing anybody? But we got perfection on the line. You got to play them. Bill made the right call. This was also the first NFL game to be broadcast on three networks since Super Bowl one. Wow! Because there was that much hype around it, and a lot of people didn't have. I NFL. wonder how they broke that. Like for yeah, they had like John Kerry had to lobby like antitrust shit <laughs> on the floor. Like legit, I was reading about this. Yeah, before. like because he was like, people need to see this game, but not everyone had NFL Network. The back priorities then. of America <laughs> are so fucked up. <laughs> We are fucking <laughs> sick. Wait, hell, healthcare? No, no, no. Important. We gotta see Tom Brady go for perfection. <laughs> yeah, true. So, uh, it's fucking true. <laughs> this was on the NFL Network, NBC, and CBS. There was a six-hour pregame show. Like they were building this thing up, like you would have thought it was the Super Bowl. Um, Humble and pie. Of course, we had the buy and the home field advantage, and the other record besides sixteen and zero, Tom to break most touchdown passes in a season, Randy to break most receiving touchdowns in a season. Each one needed two. Oh. So that was the bit that was the other big one coming into it. And we get into this game. It's a shootout. 38-35, back and forth. The game starts out with a bomb to Plaxico. 52 yard. We're like, oh shit. Like mm -hmm. they're playing too. Like they're we're we're uh, they're trying to spoil something. And here. I hate when I hate man, I fucking hate Eli Manning, man. <laughs> I fucking Go off. hate Go oh, off. I don't cause okay, like like on paper, he's the most inept of the family, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, nah. not like, not, I'm not saying stat wise, I'm just saying when you, how they, yeah. like, how they made it look. It's like this Peyton, this great daddy, he's like, bring on Eli. Eli. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he's not, he's not bad at football, but no. just, that's not what I'm saying. He's not bad at football. Yeah. But just like the presentation. Yes. But like, we dealing with, you know, it's this guy. Yeah. This guy? This guy. Is it That's me. how it always felt. Like, this motherfucker is doing this to us. 
If you're like a mouth breather with a punchable face bro, and you're beating you us, I'm like, I'm, saying. I'm like, bro. He got the most squishy face. You need the squishy <laughs> face one. And it kills me. And he it, be doing it to us. It's I like, know. Like getting beat by Lenny from Mice and Menace and shit. <laughs> <laughs> shit sucked. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Fucking Eli. <laughs> We, but the Pats thankfully respond in this one. Get up 10 7. Moss gets a TD in the second they quarter. They were down 12 points. So. Yes. And then we, I mean, then the Giants respond. How's in a kickoff 74 yards? Then Steve O bangs in a couple of uh, field goals. We get up 16 14. They take the lead. Kevin Boss, that dude balled out this game. Random, out. random old tight end reference here. 21 16. Plaxico scores a TD early in the third. We're down 12 points here in the third quarter. Like, oh, fuck. Like, we're going 15 and 1 in this thing. But thankfully, Lawrence Maroney gets back, uh, cuts it to 28-23. Then Randy, uh, the big moment here in the pivotal <laughs> sort of turning point was in the Deep fourth ball. quarter when Randy breaks the record with a big 65-yarder. Tom breaks the record w- by throwing the pass. We get up, go for two, 30-28. to 28. That was it. Once we had broken the record, it, like the monkey was mm-hmm. off our back. The Giants were dying. We had it. Uh, Ellis Hobbs picks off Eli. We punch in another TD. They cut it 38-35. Onside kick at the end. Vrabel on the hand seam. Love that. Recovers it. We win 38-35. Get out of there with perfection. Man, you know where you were when you watched this game? Do you have do you remember that? Was this a big game for you? It was a big game. I was in Atlanta and I would I was at my brother's. I went to my brother's so we could watch it together. Yeah. I think if I remember correctly, I was watching at my brother's house. But it was a big game. It was a big game. It was a huge game. Cause it was like I said. It was setting the tone for what we knew was a Super Bowl win, that turned out to not be. Which is why now I do not trust any time Boston anything goes undefeated this season. I'm with you. It don't. It's bad luck. The it, President's Cup. It's bad luck. It's almost like get the loss out of the way when it Yo, doesn't really when matter. When the Celtics like, just went, yes. bad luck. I, I know. I, I was. It, I, I had a bad feeling. I'm with you. Because I'm like, we just, uh, that just doesn't work out for us. Like, it's bound to end at some yeah. point. I don't want it to end when yeah. it matters most. Yeah, and then when, when Tatum came in with the, anything, when he had that, I said, we going to lose. <laughs> Every roll. time he, Tatum, pull an antic, that's why I'm like, if he pull one of these, I love I love you, Tate. I love I you, love bro. I love you, JT. I, I, we met, we had a conversation, but I'm telling you right now, if you pull one of these little antics in this run, because last time when he text Kobe, yes. fucked us. Oh, he came God. in with the goddamn possible shirt, fucked us. Just play, bro. Don't do nothing. We know you love Kobe. <laughs> we know you love Kobe. We love him too. I love you, but don't don't do it. Don't, if he pulls a, if he pulls a move, you know where we at. Amen. Damn we had bad. The, we had the Larry O'Brien trophy in here the other day, the NBA trophy. Yeah. I didn't even want to touch it. I was so I'm like it might be bad luck for JT if I touch this bro. thing. Bro, you know I was all over. We that were all thing. over that one. <laughs> <laughs> bro, we gotta win it this year. Come on, guys. How crazy was that connection, TB and Moss? That had to be fun as a fan. See that? I was a sports fan. I was like, man, these dudes are just lighting it up. I'm telling you, it's, first of all, just Randy Moss coming to Boston. Like, anytime uh, as a black person from Boston, anytime like a, a, a real nigga comes, we're excited. Yeah. Because it's like they don't bring nobody black to us. They don't yeah. let us have that. And if they do, it's like it, it is not like one of them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like they giving us like this is primo. Yo, yo. So we amp. Just Randy Moss gonna be in Boston. There's a jersey we can finally buy and feel good. <laughs> At 81. <laughs> and throw on our backs and like, yo, let's go. And then the way they were playing, come on, man. Should we bang through this aftermath real quick? Ang- yeah, let's see what do we got. In the aftermath, Randy sets the record 23. for most receiving touchdowns in a season. Ends up at 23. Oh, Tom, Jerry. we're going to set the record for most passing touchdowns in a season. Ends up at 50. Peyton Manning has since broken that record. He put up 55. Uh, the Patriots would finish the season 16-0. and First team to go undefeated since the 72 Dolphins. Do The Giants would make the playoffs at 10-6. and six. And, uh, yeah, we know how that season Bro. ended at the 18-1 and one Super Bowl. Bro. The David Tyree helmet catch. Bullshit. Uh, I don't even want to talk about Curse. it. Curse. And never, Curse. never to be called from the dead. Again. What? Weren't they supposed to call it dead? Yeah, because there was a holding penalty and Eli was in the grasp. Bro. Gum, gum, uh, double bubble the, on the side. See, of I'm saying, mice and shit. Like we did, like, come on, bro. And, and for our new friends, listeners out there, this we did this episode, episode one with Eli and Teddy Bruschi. Give it a listen. That's how we started this whole stinking really? podcast. Yeah. So Eli? 
Yeah, we when we Eli were filming back Brew. in New York on Canal Street. Oh, Teddy. that's so fucking cool. Yeah, they had both of them. It was first time. And they Teddy. was doing, they was doing all that shit too, because they was just, they was always doing this thing like the the whole Manning family versus Tom Brady was always this. Oh thing, yeah. Right? So that's what used to piss me off too, because anytime the whole shit would come up, they bring up the daddy. Like <laughs> fuck the daddy. I don't give a fuck about the, the dad. What the fuck does he even have to do with the, the legacy of the man and the daddy man and the daddy? Fuck y'all, man. Some say that the, the Mannings are you know hierarchy. Family that runs the NFL. I, oh, it's like some some mob shit, some Illuminati type shit. One hundred percent, people oh, say that. See, I believe that. I do too. That makes sense for a lot of things that was happening. Eighteen and one giant loss. Mm. Jack, we miss anything? We were pretty clean this episode. There were tons of records from this game. We'll get into it later. There, I won't bore you with them here. Uh, it's also the President's Trophy, not the President's Cup. Kyler with the the hockey correction. And I got you know, one last. They always give the a trophy to the team in hockey. I'm not a hockey guy really that much either, but they give for regular season. If you get the best record, they give you a trophy called the President's Trophy or something. Mm. And that person always ends up losing. Really? Always. It's like bad luck. They never win. Mm. But to to put a bow on this thing and to hopefully give us a little hope for the future as a real deal Pats fan, Sam, you got any words of hope for the next era, the Mayo era, the Drake May era? Well, you, what do you think? This is what I think. Boston as a city, Patriots as a franchise, y'all got to stop being racist and bring in some black receivers. <laughs> Just bring in some motherfuckers. They might, you know, it might not be your flavor. You might feel like it's too rambunctious, so it's not this, so it's not that. But there's a lot of black people in the city, so there's a place for them to go and hang out. But you're going to start having to put some color on these teams unabashedly. If we gonna get the job done, like it. How many white receivers do we have right now? I don't, I don't think any. I don't really. Yeah, we're just. I'm saying. <laughs> I don't. So we're we're good. Stay that way. Getting there. Stay like that it. way. Before we move on, Sam, can I ask you a question? So during the roast, uh, during one of your jokes when you're ripping into Bert, did you see what he pulled out? Yes. That got cut from. The, I was watching yeah. it. It got cut. Yeah, it got cut. I think it was Zins. You think it was Zins? <laughs> it was Zins. <laughs> Bert. So yeah, we already doing that because I haven't been watching. I'm not gonna lie. Tom left. My heart broke. And oh, I had, what do you mean Tom left? Oh, when the Patriots, the Patriots. Yeah. Oh, I thought you. So meant, I'm saying I haven't been watching. Like I'll be like roast. straight up. I have not been watching this whole Matt Jones. Era. I have not. I don't watch. football. You didn't miss much. I don't watch football, so I w I definitely would not know because that's how sad I was. How about Cam Newton for the year? I was that real was sad. Yeah. Tom should retire the Patriot man. That was just not right. It just wasn't right, and I didn't want to watch no more. I was like, I don't even care. And then go to Tampa and win. Broke my Tampa. The gross, the gross. Tampa. For a while, I was mad at Tom. Like, you just oh, want to hurt our feelings. Same. Why, Tampa? Tampa. Ugh. Ugh. So I, I, I haven't picked up. I haven't watched football in a long time. So we are doing that. That's good. Just keep doing that. I'm with you. I'm with you. I, I just went to Tampa for, like, the second time. Nice, nice airport. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You ever, you ever see? You gotta watch this interview. It's Aretha Franklin, and they're asking her about all the singers of today, what she thinks about them. Like, who do you? What do you think about? And she'll, they're like Ariana Grande, and she'll go, "Nice gowns." <laughs> <laughs> That's what you just did to Tampa. <laughs> nice gowns. <laughs> Let's name this game. What do we name this game? The 16 and 0 game, 23 to 50 game because of the two records that were beaten with Brock Moss and Brady or the foreshadow game. You know where I'm going. Foreshadow game. The foreshadow game. The foreshadow game. Let's score the game. Is this the greatest game of all time? Let's score it. Stakes. 1 to 10. Decimals okay. The stakes of this regular season game to go undefeated. That hadn't been done since 72. I mean, you got to put a nine. That's, a, that's, a, that's an integrity score. Hey, man, I went nine. Right on the line. I went nine one. Star power. Lots of stars. Ten. Ten. Tom, Randy. Another team too. Bill. Stars on the team. Oh, and Eli. Yeah. Yeah. Pierce. Was so Lax. Yeah. Lax. Yeah. Gameplay. Shootout back and forth. Down to 12 points. Come back. Yes. 38. Ten. Ten. 28 to 3 games a 10. 9.9. .9. You think that's 
Okay, okay. Eight. Okay. If we, if we compare it to that, eight. The name of the game, the foreshadow game, one to ten decimals, okay. Sam J. Seven. Seven. Eight, five, eight, three. That's an integrity that's a, score that's a, right that's there. That's an integrity score. We love the it. The 10 on star power is a little tough. Thing. Yep, 8.19, 8.19. Sometimes I like to calculate, like, celebrities at the game. This wasn't a super boring thing. Yeah. We didn't see a J-Lo titty or nothing. No. Like, you know what I mean? So, like, no, so no titty out. Where does it stack up, Jack? This puts us right ahead of the 2011 NBA Finals. Game 6, Mavericks Heat, which we did with Mark Cuban. And right behind the wide right Super Bowl 25 Bills versus Giants, which we did with Tom Papa. Pretty good, pretty good uh, company there. Okay. Right on. Sam, we miss anything about this? No. What do you, you got something to plug? What are, we, what are we doing right now? I'm on tour right now. What's the name of the tour? Where can we find where the Ooh. tickets are? <laughs> the name of the tour is Nigio. <laughs> Neo Nigio, which is a play on Akira in uh, Neo Tokyo. Heck yeah. Uh, and yeah, it's called Neo Nigio because I like anime. And uh, I'm going everywhere, dude. I'm all over this this great country of ours. Um, all that's on my like Instagram, at Sam J Comic, S-A-M-J-Y Comic. Twitter is the same, so you can find out where I'm at. And, you know, just staying busy. Any L.A. tour? Any L.A. dates? I'm going to come here. I want to come see. Yeah, you, you already know. You're more than invited. Thank you. Absolutely. Shout out to Sam J. That was an awesome episode. Thank and check out her special on HBO Max right check now. Check out the special on HBO Max. What is that called? Salute Me or Shoot Me. Yeah. Salute Me or Shoot Me. Yeah, named after Waka Flocka mixtape. Shout out to Waka Flocka. Waka Flocka. Thank you. Thank you. That was fun. Man, she was awesome. Real deal Bostonian. She knows her stuff. I got to go check out some of her... What did she call it? The tour? Yeah. yeah. Black so, culture tour uh, of um, Boston. Oh, yeah. oh, that yeah. one. That yeah. One. yeah. You should do that. Yeah. That'd be sick. Yeah. I'll tag along it's a really with you. really good Caribbean food in Dorchester. In the- yeah, but you go to the hipster food. <laughs> I, I, yeah. You go I to went like, one time to a place I was interested and I probably shouldn't have been there, but. We got it. She was riding hard for the, the, uh, the Chinese food of Boston. Yeah. Which was a, Whoa. Saying that to a San Francisco Some people Bay like Area that, I mean, I don't know. What do I know? My wife's I think, you know, American Chinese was invented literally in San Francisco. Biggest Chinatown in. Literally. I don't know. I uh, There was one noodle spot I was trying to think of. I used to go to Taiwan uh, Cafe here and there. I never hit that. In Boston. I ordered from another one. What was Bernard's? Bernard's is the one over in Chestnut Hills. Like the we're Chinese up. place named Bernard's. Yeah. <laughs> it was a little... <laughs> It was all right. It was good. I liked it. I liked it. I was always, I was always DoorDash and like Wagamama from the seaport. So I was not, not experiencing the seaport local Chinese. Come on. Bro. Yeah, I know. <laughs> all right. Well, that was a fun episode. It was great to get to know her a little bit. Um, let's hit this old hotline. Oh, hold on, hold on. Before we hit the hotline, we didn't have a lot of time with Sam. We were moving and grooving. We were in the zone. But we got to talk about some of these records that were broken in this Week Seventeen game. There's a slew of them. We could do a whole episode just about these records. And then we got to put our shine on our man, Randy. Uh, 23. 23 touchdown grabs. Um, that was the record. Um, most single season receiving touchdowns. That still race. stands. Still stands. Um, and then Tom with his 50th TD pass. That was the record at the time. Broken in 2013 by Peyton Manning. 55. 55. Still incredible. That's still a Patriots. Started that se- We did his starting game of that season. Yeah, he had seven of them, right? Seven right there. <laughs> seven right there uh, on that faithful night against old Joe Flacco at Mile High. Um, Brady's Joe record. Flacco. Flacco. Is he elite? Flacco. I'm still working on my Baltimore accent. It's nice hey, to see Leo, that some of these records have held me up. up with the extra game still, too. For it sure. It wasn't just like they added an extra game and all these records fell down. It's nice that some of them are holding strong. We'll see if we go to 18 games, but. The Patriots finished the season with a plus 315 point differential, breaking the point differential of the 1942 Bears, which was plus 292. Crazy. Um, the And then we got to get to the viewership. The viewership on this thing was nuts. Ended up with 34.6 million total viewers. This is a regular season. This is a game. regular season game. Last season, to put this in comparison, the high was... Um, 31.8 million viewers. That was on the Texans-Ravens 
playoff game um, of this last season. Wow. January 20th, 2024. Well, it's a playoff game. Right, but it's wow. a playoff game. But still, to put it in comparison, $3 million more. Um, and like we said, it was also broadcast on NFL Network, CBS, and NBC. Um, to no get Fox? Everybody. I guess Fox didn't get any love. Oh, Fox? Let's Sorry. go. Probably the best team to not win a Super Bowl. Yeah. yeah. Ever. Yeah. And maybe. No. In all sport? Maybe. In all sport? Maybe. It's up there. Yeah. I mean, there's been the, the Bruins team was very good last really, year. Really, really good. Didn't do it, but they went record setter. They just had a great record. Bruins last year weren't even in the same con. Like that's no, not they, they were. They broke a record for most wins. Like for yeah, most but points, President but Cup winners never go on. And there was also like the whole thing where they don't have overtime as much. The whole shootout thing. There's a lot of people always arguing that maybe that maybe that Golden State Warriors team that, that lost was just looking up. That could have been yeah. that. That's that's. That's a good. That's a good conversation that we could have. Maybe a full on post guest segment. Be a top five, top five, top five, top five. Best team to not win a championship, ever. Yeah, ever. But I think this just with the record, with all the record records, names, there, everything, and all the there's so much story around this 2017 with just getting Randy Moss and them just balling out and West. Spygate and West and then oh, they were Junior just kicking the shit out of teams early. It was a vengeance tour. It was just gonna be like. It wasn't about whether the Patriots were going to win. It was going to be like, were they going to get 50? And how many points were they going to win by is what you were watching for. So, fun season. Sucks what happened, but it's a wow. good game. Sam was great. Want to do fun the to relive some glory years. Let's do the hotline. Let's hit the it. hotline. Remember, that number is 424-291-2290. I'm calling because I just want to know, of all the players that you guys have played with, who was one of the smartest guys who never got the recognition that they deserved, that knew the game inside and out, but nobody would have known it? That's my question. Wow, that's a good question. I'm, I'm going to go throwback team. Ryan Wendell. Mm. He was my roommate. And he was a, he knew everything inside and out of the playbook for the O-line. He was very versatile. He played center guard when we need him. We swing him around. And, like, also, he would always be... Re we were roommates for a couple years. He'd be reading in the communal room with the big TV in it, which is a faux... You can't do that. You can't take communal room and read. The Xbox is literally in the communal room. And he would do that so much, I get so mad. But he was a fucking smart guy. and he Smart football player, very smart outside the game. And now I think he's the offensive line coach for Buffalo Bills, right? He's with the Rams now, actually. Oh, he's with Rams. I forgot. 2023 as of uh, 2023 to present, yeah. Yeah, he, he's he was here. smart. He's smart. What kind of stuff is he reading? Fiction, nonfiction? Everything. 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 Ryan, Ryan would be a great guest to have. We got to get him on now right. that I know. I forgot. It. I just saw him with uh, at practice. Oh, that's right. Oh, when you're, yeah, too. gotta yeah. get him in, bro. Yeah. You gotta be able to read through COD. Like, put some noise canceling headphones in. I don't care. No, first <laughs> off, we had six bedrooms in the goddamn house. <laughs> go sit your ass on the side, or go so go to your room. <laughs> good, day. good question. Hey, Jules, this is Nathan from Woonsocket, Rhode Island. Um, I was wondering if the Patriots made the playoff and they gave you a call and said. Hey, Jules, we need you to finish this run. Would you come back? All right. Love the show. Love the content. You're amazing. Nathan, like we talking like we have a shot to win this thing. Let's 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 help Nathan out. You're one seed. Pat's her one seed. Killing it. Whoever, Drake, Drake May is just slinging it out. Up. You know, and then their top receiver goes down. You get a phone call. Now is this how many games we have? Like, is this in the AFC Championship? We talking divisional round? They they got to buy and they're gonna play their first game of the divisional first game round. in. Oh, so this is the jump of playoffs. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I would, I would, I would teeter at it. It's just the they're gonna be fine tuned when you go into an NFL season. I haven't played in two years, three years. You're gonna jump in to when these guys are full bored out perfectly. Running on fucking just straight alcohol, as in a car. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, dude. Th these guys are so fine tuned by this point of the season. It'd be hard. I'd be able to get open a couple times. What if Coach Mayo said, "I just need a couple third downs in the fourth quarter." Mayo will know this. 
Mayo, if you're watching this, you'll know this. You and me, baby. <laughs> Next question. Watch, Mayo's going to hey, laugh. Hey, Jewel. I was thinking, uh, considering you were on the roast of Brady on Netflix the other night, I was thinking about possibly if you could bring in Randy. Talk about game. I don't know. You could pick a game, whether it be Dallas, Thanksgiving 98, or the game against the Giants where he broke the Jerry Rice's record. Uh, that'd be cool. Thank you. Yeah, we would love to get Randy on. I, we, we, we talked about it. We'll figure we're gonna we're gonna get him on here as soon as we can. We just gotta we might have to go out and bring games with names on a fishing boat on a bass boat and do this thing while we're fishing or something. Because Randy, if he ain't doing TV, he's fishing. If I known anything, he was so great to see him. He's the best. He's the best. A little shine to Randy on that faithful day in '98. We all know the meme, the screenshot: three catches, 163 yards. Three TDs. Dang. What a stat line. He's a freak. That's a stat line. <laughs> it bombs. <laughs> Games with names. This is Aaron Andrew from the East Coast again. Just wanted to call in and say that I had a great time watching y'all. Well, the Patriots at the Rose of Tom Brady. Jules, I love you. I miss you all on the field. Uh, obviously, that will never change. But great times. It was great seeing you all together again. Anyway. Uh, looking forward to listening to your podcast. All righty. Peace. Aaron Andrews again? Again. Is there a question in there? I think he's just glazing us up, loving us up. <laughs> Good guy. He's a, he might be our uh, the new member of the WAC Pack here. A frequent caller. I love it. <laughs> hey, Julian. This is Nick from Michigan. That episode you guys had with Ernie Adams was beautiful. There's a lot of great information. And if you can definitely get him on again to do another game, that would be great for us football fans. Just want to say thank you, and you guys are doing a great job. Take care, Julian. Ernie. 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 Coach, I'm not go- I feel like this is like a Rudy. A Ru- Remember Rudy? <laughs> yes. Coach, I'm not playing unless Rudy's in. Ruck- whatever. Put my jersey on the table. <laughs> I'm going to put my hat on <laughs> yeah. for Ernie to come back. Coach Barcini. We, I don't know when we're going to drop this, but there could be I think some. it's before. So you can we're dropping this before? Yeah, we can be teasy about uh, it. We'll see. We got we got a little Earn Dog special coming up with the Patriots little collab. You'll we'll, we'll, we'll check that out here. Be on the lookout. You'll know it when you see. It. You'll know it. Ernie. Hey, Jules. It's Nick from Maine. Big fan of yours for a long time. Uh, I wanted to pitch two games for you. Um, game two, 2017 Eastern Conference Finals. Isaiah Thomas's 53 point blowout game. Uh, and then another one, kind of out of left field for you. Uh, 2009 Great Cup Championship, Montreal Alouettes, Saskatchewan Rough Riders, the 13th man game. Uh, thinking maybe like Ben Cahoon, receiver for the Alouettes. You and him seem to have pretty similar styles back then. Uh, I feel like that was a fun, uh, fun conversation too. Love the pod. Thanks, Jules. Straight CFL and Isaiah Thomas, 53 blowout game. I love that. The 13th man game. I got to do a little. Uh digging on that one just we gotta crazy. check it out fun fact i almost was a bc lion bc lion and the mainer like in the cf or the was it cfl right huh what do they call it canadian league cfl yeah, yeah cfl yeah, yeah. mainer i wonder how north and i remember when isaiah thomas was blowing this is this was for the the celts right yeah this was i mean it was he was with us the fourth quarter rolls around it points to his wrist baby yeah, and playing, playing. He had a hip the, thing that went. Through. I know that Never was the same. Or what happened? He's still trying to get in. Yeah, he was. He finished the year with the um, Suns this year, but I mean, he's balling in the G League, still trying to come back. But yeah, once he lost that quickness and that first step with the hip, it was kind of downhill, unfortunately. But man, some of those fourth quarters in that season with the Celts, man, he electric, was balling, electric. I remember we were the right. little guy, the little guy. Tommy used to say, "Legend." Hey, Jules, Gronk, this is Rats from Chicago, Illinois. I'm a diehard Hats fan surrounded by a sea of Chicago Bears fans in the great city of Chicago. Chicago. My uh, question for you guys is, did you have any pregame rituals or superstitions that you had to complete before the game? And if not, did you have any unique teammates that had some unique rituals and superstitions before the game? That's it. Go Pats. 
I used to lay out my uniform. Like, I remember I saw a, a picture of Dion doing it pregame. And so I used to do it since I was like a kid. You're talking like on the floor of the locker on room? On the floor. You put your pants, your jersey, your socks, your cleats. You basically make like a, like a, what is it? Like a FBI print? Yeah, like, where a, like a crime dead scene. body yeah. is of your uniform. Very reminiscent of the first day of school kind of vibe. Yeah. Getting your fit laid out. Yeah. Always lay out. I have like four, I always had, uh, I'd have like three or four different socks. Four, because I used to go like a, 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 uh, a sock for a while. I didn't, Jordan socks, and then I stopped doing those. I did these other socks, and then I'd have the tights, or I was wearing where you would wear a sock, and then you put like a blue sleeve over your calf, and I'd always have to pick from like three brand new ones, three three or four brand new ones. I'd have four pairs, of, and I'd just have to like look, see. And then uh, I had the same routine. I'd get there like four hours early. I'd go and sit in the hot tub with my play sheet my play call sheet which you know you have every situation every you know everything in the game plan that you could run you do that chad o'shea our, our receiver coach used to give the, the give us these tip sheets so you go over everything third down plan four point plan or four point plan third down the red area uh your backed up situations your situation your air ball you had everything on it so you go over that in the hot tub after that I would go catch balls. I had this tennis, tennis ball drill where I would go over in the back of the stadium. And sometimes people, fans could actually see, you know, they'd walk by because they would rope it off and there'd be some security guys there because I needed a brick wall. And so I used to do like 200, 250 balls of that. I had these different uh, drills that I used to do. And then I'd go to the field and it started with Double J's, who was our equipment manager. Then it went to Bobby Balls and then it went to Bobby uh, there was like three different guys, uh, or Bobby Balls, and then I had Jimmy Neutron for a while. <laughs> I used to call this kid Jimmy Neutron, but oh, then geez. Bobby Balls replaced him. So then we go do like 150 to 200 catch circuit that I would do every time. Then I would go in and I would uh, get my body worked on. I would do like a um, a circuit uh, pregame, uh, like flush of all my lower extremities. That'd be like 45 minutes. After that, I would I would shower and then I would go, I would go take an IV. Oh. I I would get I I would always sign up for two bags, but I'd have a, a chew in. And so I could I'd have take a bag down and then like by the second time through your spit, you could tell how how hydrated you were. So if I was spitting a lot and I, then I had to, that's when I would stop my IV. Uh, and then go, go to the locker, put your shit on. I'd always go, uh, right to left. And then, uh, Ivan Fears would be in there getting ready to call early birds, returners. There's, everyone had their mark when they were going to go to the field. And that, that was, it was like that every, every, every game, every game. Away stadium, I'd have to go find a place where I could do my tennis ball thing. Or sometimes on the away stadium, we would do it at the hotel. So I'd get up early, go to the, I would find a parking lot. I mean, I would, we'd be scouring. I'd have our equipment guy, Super Bowls, everything. We'd scour for a fucking brick wall <laughs> so I could do my ball drills every day. It was crazy. Like, it was like a thing. That's cool. You know what I mean? Like, oh, shit, we, we haven't found it. You know, like, J double J's, I got half the equipment staff, like, fucking, what are we going to do this thing? It was fucking awesome. But they oh, always took yeah. care of me and those guys, I mean... Those are the types of people that get are the unsung heroes, the equipment staffs, the training staffs, the fucking meal ladies, like all the people behind the scenes in the hallways when you see the guys working on the fields like you I was around them for so long you create these relationships and you know it was it was everyone to take the win. Heck yes. Were there like you mentioned doing that routine on away games? Was there any stadiums that were really good for your routine or Yeah, Denver always had a lot of space. Denver had huge locker rooms. You could do it in the fucking locker room. Whoa. You know what I mean? Like, I remember when we went to San Francisco, we stayed in Redwood Shores. Like, we had to, me and Double J, or it was Bobby Balls and, or could it, we could even had an intern. Because there was a while where Double J's, as we know, he got fired. And, uh, you know, then I had like, I had like basically a throwing combine for all the people that worked. <laughs> I had scouts. <laughs> I was like, nah, you can't do it, dude. Nope. Nope. 
you know, these guys, <laughs> they'd all be busting my balls like, oh, we having the combine this year. Like the training staff would be fucking with me, gym way later and stuff. I, or half, sometimes there'd be a trainer that could throw and I'd have to steal him. He's like doing more. I'm like, he ain't, he ain't playing this week. Come, let's go get the balls. <laughs> but San Francisco, we had to like walk and we were doing it. And there's like rocks and balls are going near the bay because we were right on the water and shit. It was so fucking fun. And I knew exactly where we were because I grew up in that area. That was like one of my favorite. Oh, that rocks. That's awesome. That was a good question. Yeah, and there's more. To, we won't go into it now, but there's more. But I want to hear about other players' superstitions or routines, too, at some point in the future. Yeah, I'm, but I, I didn't worry about it. I wasn't like looking at other players. Yeah. You're in a fucking zone, bro. This is. I'm going to war. You think I'm worried about what they're doing? Yeah. No, because if I do my job, he does his job. We collectively do our job together, and we go and fucking win and execute the goddamn game. Okay, I'm not sitting here stroking JoJo's looking at fucking Gronk's dick, Kyler. <laughs> okay? More of a hockey thing, then. I get it. Our man Last from one. Chicago. Great question. Yeah, oh yeah. Also, I wanted to, to touch on that. I don't think I've ever heard anyone from, say, Let's Go Pats in like a Midwestern accent. It like, sounds good. I like it. Let's go Pats. Let's go Pats. Chicago. <laughs> that bad. That Chicago. Oh, Pats. We're, we need Ninko. We got to get Ninko. Uh, been a fan of the podcast since it started. There's at least uh, two guys I want you to consider interviewing at some point in the future. Either like Lloyd McGinnis on the yep. infamous game against Indianapolis where he stopped Edge and James at the goal line, and or possibly Troy Polamalu in the game against the Ravens in the AFC Championship game where he picked off Flacco Flacco at Pittsburgh to 43. I hope that will happen at some point. Be excited if it does. God bless. Those are two. Those are we. We got to get them on. Willie Mack. He'll come on. We got to get Willie Mack on. It was good to see him a couple days ago at the roast. Heck yeah. You know he's big bro. Troy Polamalu. That'd be a that'd be an awesome guest. To I I was such a fan of Polamalu when I was at Kent State. Funny story. I lived with uh, Brian Lanehard and Cabrani Mixon. We. We had like this room and we stole these Nike cutouts from uh I think it was like a shoe store. Like they're they were like throwing it away or something. Like a champ sports kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. And there was Nike cutout of fucking Troy <laughs> and of Wes Welker. And we had them in our fucking we had them in our house, like on our walls. <laughs> and so it was it was crazy. That's hilarious. Love duo. Troy. I mean, Troy was so cool. And I grew up in I grew up in California and I grew up playing with like a lot of Paulies. Yeah. Samoans, Tongans. So like, I was always a huge like fan of any Samoan, any Tongan in the league. You know, the juniors. Like, he was a god when I was a kid. You know, even though I was a Niners fan. But, like, he was just so cool. So that would be a... That's for sure would be amazing to get Troy on here. I'm such a fan of him and the respect he has for the game. He'd go light you up and, like, do a prayer for you afterwards. <laughs> He prayed before every play, I think. That's insane. That's a superstition. Talk That's about a superstition. superstition. Not superstition, religious. Uh, yeah. Routine. So, routine. When, when did he retire? Did you I played against him a couple times. Yeah. Yeah. That's he was he, he was a little older. And those are two guys. I caught a ball on him, I think. But he, I think he hit me pretty hard. I had to block him a couple times. Those are two guys I would love to have on my team for a goal line stand. Willie yeah. Mack and Troy Palomalo. Dude, Troy just timing snap, jumping over, <laughs> getting the fucking quarterback. He was, that was he had some of the craziest stuff. He's awesome. He was oh three awesome to fourteen. Well, yeah, should, play highlights later. Oh, I'm down. Okay. I'm down. All right, good episode. What a game! Thanks again to Sam J. She was awesome. That's been another episode of Games with Names. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Comment a game you want us to do, and remember. Rate and review. That kind of reminds me of Blue's Clues for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, shout out, and, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> you guys see the video where he just was like nodding on like TikTok and like it, like everyone loved it. It went viral. I just remember he was one of the early guys that they um, they said he was dead and he wasn't. Like in the early internet era. Yeah. He had to like go on the Today Show and be like, I'm alive, God damn it. <laughs> his parents were crying. Steve, right? Steve, yeah. Steve, Steve with his handy dandy notebook? Yeah. <laughs> we just got a letter. We, we just, just got, got a letter. letter. We, we just got, got a letter. letter. I wonder who it's from. from. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I was raised on Blue's Clues. 
Remember to follow Games With Names on YouTube, Instagram, X, TikTok, and Snapchat. Leave a message on the hotline at 424-291-2290. We will see you next week. Games With Names is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.